Welcome to HIV Hope and Charity, a podcast series brought to you by TVPS, a charity that's been supporting people affected by HIV since 1985. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jess and we work for TVPS and our aim is to get as many people as possible HIV educated. If you like the podcast, please rate, subscribe and leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please be advised that this week's episode of HIV Hope and Charity features mature themes such as sexual assault. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, welcome to HIV Hope and Charity. We're back after our little break, mini break. Yes, it was good, wasn't it? Oh, it was a nice weekend. It was a very lovely, I mean, I love any weekend that's longer than two days, so. (laughs) Yes, me too. (laughs) Ideal. Although someone said to me, oh, there's only like one more kind of summery bank holiday. And I thought, oh my God, that's true. It's just August, isn't it? This is it now, to the end of August. Yeah, we've been spoiled this year. Oh my gosh, that's so far away. I know, and they've all been kind of bunched together. I'm so ungrateful. No, I'm like, yeah, I want more of them. I think we should do one a month, it'd be great. Yeah, maybe we should uh, put that forward in some sort of petition. I'll I'll get starting a gov position. We'll put put that forward. (laughs) So if there isn't enough to worry about for our government, let's bombard them with petitions about extra bank holidays. One a month should do it. That will keep the country happy. Perfect. Yeah, they're missing a trick there. We'd yeah keep a lot of people happy. I think it would. Right. Do you want to know what we're doing this week? I do. I can't lie though. Um, I saw some of your notes on your desk, so I. <laughs> I know how awful this must have been for you. I didn't read the notes, I just saw the title. So I'm aware of the title of what we're covering, but I I cannot wait to get into it with you. So why don't you tell us what we're doing this week? Okay, so this week we're looking at a moment in history, a film. I can almost hear our entire audience bracing themselves for the car crash that this is going to be. Even Bernice, our most loyal supporter, she's at home. She's like, oh, here we go. Yeah, she will be. She'll be messaging me. Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) All the horrendousness of your podcast, discussing films, is by far the most horrific. But we're going to do it. We have to do it. We're going to look at a very iconic and hard-hitting film called Kids. It's not going to be a surprise. Um, to anyone if I say I haven't seen it and you've been saying we should feature this film for months it's not massively a surprise for you because I finally caved in thank you and I did think oh just read up on it on Wikipedia no one needs to watch a whole film and then I thought no I should I need to man up and watch it so I did and it was the most horrific hour and a half of my life I was so proud of you though Sarah I didn't realize she was going to watch the whole thing I thought you might just be watching clips and she started emailing me just little bits like oh my goodness this has happened and I was just there going it, it's going to get worse <laughs> and it did and she just kept oh this has happened now so yeah I'm actually so proud of you because as we know and this is of the podcast know you're very much a Bridget Jones diary type of woman that's your comfort zone everything nice and light you don't like the dark stuff so for you this is completely out your comfort zone well done thank you I mean I have to confess I didn't plan to watch the whole thing I thought I'll go in and watch the trailer and that'll give me enough of a feel of what's going on to base the rest of the podcast around what I didn't realize is that I hadn't gone into the trailer gone into the actual film and it started and I was like oh this is quite dark for just the trailer and then I realized I was like well I'm watching it now I have to carry on because I need to know what happens next you're an hour in going this is the longest trailer I've ever watched yeah it just like just kept focusing on the kind of the first kind of scene and I was like but there's nothing else going on this is bizarre honestly like I said I'm going to say it again I'm so proud of you because I'm just surprised you actually got through it there are a lot of moments in it that I would have thought you might have gone this I cannot cope anymore like enough but you, you pushed on through you got all the way to the end didn't you I did yes I no, I did I watched the whole thing So now I'm going to recap it in great detail so everyone can share with us. So if you want to watch the film, spoilers all over the place now. So probably best to watch it and then listen to what we've got to say. That's true. Spoiler alert. Okay, so this is a film that was released in 1995 and it's the story of young people in New York. I mean, that makes it sound really wholesome, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's not (laughs) as light as that, as Sarah's making it seem. (laughs) 
<laughs> totally wrong way to start, wasn't it? It's a lovely film about young people. No, it's very gritty. It's very raw. It's about young people having sex, taking drugs. I think it's a lay budget, isn't it? Lay budget independent film. They didn't use any big stars. They literally used people that were living that life. And some of them, they're really good actors actors and actresses but that's what makes it so real it's very explicit and there is a lot of swearing I'm saying this for Bernice she doesn't like a potty mouth oh but you remember Um, I'm her daughter so well yeah unfortunately she's forced to hear like sailor swearing a lot as much as she grimaces sorry mum but it is explicit there is a lot of swearing I've said again there's a lot of sex that's clearly the bit that horrified me the most and I have to be honest actually within the first minute of watching the start of the film I really hated one of the main characters oh yeah I know who you're gonna say (laughs) hey so the plot so the film is set in 1994 and it depicts one day in New York just one day the main characters are Telly and Casper two guys and Ruby and Jenny the two girls and we start the very start of the film is telly having sex with a 12 year old virgin oh when you when you say it like that it's just it is it's so bad it's just quite raw and just like whoa this is a lot it is a lot of an afternoon when you're supposed to be working well i am working but you know (laughs) so i mean afterwards he meets up with his friend casper and they do what all young people do they talk about what's just happened and telly's aim he says is to keep having sex with girls that are virgins he says you know i love them got no diseases in shop to lift some alcohol they meet up with their friends and they boast about their sexual conquests there's lots of general chat about unprotected sex they're not bothered about catching um sexually transmitted infections they smoke weed and they're into skateboarding so they're just hanging out watching skateboarding videos i told you they are well they're skater boys really aren't they Mm. just all hanging out just being guys the girls meanwhile they're hanging out as well but in a different part of the city and they're also talking about sex but their views differ from the boys it's more meaningful they're talking about who they lost their virginity to split it because they're talking about boys coming too soon or taking forever or the taste of oral sex but that really does kind of set the kind of scene for the film really if you are in any doubt it is very much about sex I mean literally there have only been a few scenes here and it, the entirety of the first I don't know 10-15 minutes is definitely just all about sex definitely we've moved back to the boys they're talking about how they hate condoms how AIDS isn't real they don't know anyone who has it girls on the other hand they're talking about safe sex and Ruby says that her and Jenny went to the clinic last week to be tested then it flashes back to the clinic so there's Ruby and Jenny each with a different nurse going through their sexual history so Ruby thinks she's had sex with kind of eight or nine guys she's used protection with some she's had anal sex she's a bit kind of worldly wise isn't she yes yeah she's she's very she's a bit more open a more experienced than Jenny yeah and Jenny on the other hand she says well, look, I've only had sex with one guy she gets embarrassed when she's asked if she's had anal sex she's a bit more naive then it cuts back to today the day of the film and they're getting their results Ruby is all clear as the nurse says to her you're clean I swear they don't use that expression anymore I hope they don't I know that's <laughs> one of our pet hates Oh, it's the worst. I I hate that term. And we hear that a lot as well. When we're doing testing and people say, we ask them if they feel they've been at any risk. And they say, oh, no, no, I haven't because I don't sleep with anyone dirty or I, they were clean. Or let's not let's not use these phrases ever. I can't believe people ever did use those, that expression. But oh, I guess it's where the stigma comes from, isn't it? You're either clean or you're dirty. Lucky for Ruby, she's clean. It's the same with um, drug use, isn't it? The terminology that's used is to say you're clean. They've been clean for X amount of months. Again, like you're saying, it stigmatises that to infer that if you're using, then you're dirty. I know. Uh, So Ruby, yes, she's told she's clean. Jenny, she's tested positive for HIV and she can't believe it. They leave. She tries to phone her mum from a public payphone. No mobiles back then. She can't get hold of her mum and she's upset. And then she's off. She knows she needs to tell Telly and she needs to tell Telly because he's the one she had sex with. Oh, and then obviously, then that's there's that realization in this moment that he's then had sex at the start of the film with this twelve year old virgin. Ah, oh, yeah. And we should actually say they're played by two, um, Jenny and Ruby. It's Rosario Dawson, isn't it, that plays Ruby and Chloe? Oh, I can never say it properly. I can't say that's why I didn't put her Chloe name in. Vignet? 
the thing I can't say it properly but I, I read that Ruby was spotted by one of the directors just sat wherever she was hanging out in her neighbourhood and that's how she got into it and obviously now they're both massive actresses yeah yeah you're right definitely right where have we got up to so I mean it's all by this point I mean it's just so sad they're just kids but that is the point of the film isn't it yeah this, so Jenny's looking for Telly so the boys, including Telly, they've now gone out. They're in the park smoking weed. Casper's on his skateboard. He bumps into somebody who gets angry with him and pushes him. And then it all kicks off. You know, all of his friends pile in. The man's hit on the head with a skateboard. He falls to the floor and that's it. And then Casper whacks him over the head with his skateboard and the guy's unconscious. I know. It's horrible, isn't it? It's awful. And it's not really, it kind of comes out of nowhere as these things often do. So it's a bit of a, not a twist in the film. It's just like, oh gosh, as if there's not enough going on. This has happened. And they they all go off. They all just, they go off from the park and they're all talking about whether they've killed the man. Meanwhile, obviously Jenny, still trying to track down Telly. And then you see Telly and some of the others outside a girl's house, Darcy's house. So she's 13 and a virgin, just his type, as he says. So he's very interested in getting to know her better. But she's not playing ball. She said her mum doesn't want her to have a boyfriend just yet. So this happens, you know, he's on the street with his friend. She's hanging out the window. And she's just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm all right, thanks. A bit of a a bit of a Romeo and Juliet little nod scene there in a film heavily about sex. Yes. Very true. Meanwhile, Jenny, she's still looking for Telly. She's been told he might be at a club and she goes there to see if he's there. She meets a friend in the club and he gives her a pill. Well, he doesn't give it to her, just pops it in her mouth. It is very odd and and the guy's very odd. And he's saying to her, you look really sad, I want to cheer you up. So he just gives her a pill and she swallows it. And then, you know, obviously the pill starts to take effect and she's told Telly is at a house party. And she leaves the club. Now, that club is in no way how I remember clubs when I was younger. It was more like an orgy. There was a lot of tongues. Yes, it was. there was sex going on, wasn't there, in there and things that she was watching. And they weren't the nightclubs where you were hanging out? Wasn't, wasn't what you were doing? No, no, I don't remember anything like that ever happening. Was Maybe more, I wasn't one of the really cool kids, though. Was it more like dancing around handbags? And yes, I remember doing the Macarena and things like that in a nightclub when people did like proper those dances where everyone would get like the Saturday night dance and stuff. Oh yeah, so they well they went to very different clubs to us then. We're so vanilla. We are. We are very. Well, I'm very vanilla, definitely. Uh, so right, Jenny's left the club and she go. She arrives at the house party. She's feeling the effects of the pill as you would, but. She's too late because she walks in on Telly having sex with Darcy. Oh, and yes, you just Darcy, the girl from earlier. Yeah, the one that re- turned him down when she's relentless. And you just know it's going to be unprotected as well because that's what he's talked about all the way through. Yeah, that's what that, that's kind of one of the themes, isn't it? None of them have protected sex. They don't like it. Um, and him in particular. And he's saying, you know, if I sleep with virgins, then they're clean anyway. So I don't have to worry about all of this kind of stuff. But she sees them having sex, but the pill now takes full effect. And to be honest, I think Jenny's just given up, isn't she? She's just like, oh, whatever. And she passes out. It wasn't bad enough. Casper, Telly's friend, just wandering around the house party. One of the only ones who's awake, actually. And he sees Jenny sleeping. And what he decides to do, rather than covering her with a coat or looking after her, is he rapes her. She sleeps throughout it. And then the next morning, a naked and confused Casper wakes up and he says, Jesus Christ, what happened? And that's the end of the film. As, as if you felt it couldn't get dark enough as it keeps going. It just, but obviously it's, it is really important. I'm sure we're going to talk about that. But yes, it's not an easy watch. No, it's not. And we will talk about kind of some of the feedback around the the film and even how it came about because it isn't your usual well, certainly not the usual type of film that I would watch but so it does I, kind of have its have its place doesn't it I think it's it's important oh definitely definitely um Sarah actually when she had finished it and after because I didn't want to say something really, so I kept getting these email updates while she was watching it saying oh they've just beaten this man up in the park and that's a I'd message back saying oh it, it's going to get worse and then you emailed again saying Casper raped her this is and then you actually wrote why would would you ever watch this? I think I watched it many, many years ago. And it's a, it is a great film for what they're trying to do. But like so many films that are impactful, it's sometimes not an easy watch. But yeah, it's just the way you're oh. like, why would you watch this? You've chosen this, Jess. Yeah, why would anyone just watch this of a Saturday evening? Just as, you know, <laughs> entertainment. I've got no idea. 
<laughs> well, you're in that club now. You've watched it. Oh, oh gosh. I think it's the ending, isn't it, with Casper? Because although he has featured in the film, for me, it was all about Telly and his actions and, and kind of how derogatory he is about girls and kind of how he views sex. So Casper's there, but he's... And he is having input, but you don't actually see him do as much as Telly. So at the end, when he rapes Jenny, you're like, oh, Casper. I mean, I said a lot more than that. Not exasperated at him. I'm just like, what's the need in it all? Yeah, no, it is. But again, it, it just illustrates, doesn't it? How how quickly and easily something like HIV could, could spread in that situation where it's just person to person and they're not thinking. And oh, yeah, I know. Well, let's do a summary of the film because I think it's got it straight in my head. So in summary, Telly slept with Jenny and gave her HIV. He then sleeps with the 12 year old at the start of the film and Darcy at the end of the film. And then I've put a note to myself. Remember, film set over one day. Casper doesn't have sex until the end of the film where he rapes Jenny while she's passed out. So in 24 hours, that's potentially three more people infected. And Telly still doesn't know he's HIV positive because Jenny never got to tell him because when she found him, he was having sex with Darcy. That is basically, that. yes, that is perfectly summed up. That's how I got it straight in my head because I was like, God, quite a lot's happened. And you keep thinking it's in a day. Oh, gosh. But I think that's the beauty of the film. That That, that is what it is. It's, I feel like it's quite realistic in that respect that I believe that could have been a day in New York that happened to these kids. I Yes, I do too. But I think it's quite hard as an adult, as a mum, to acknowledge that this might happen to my own children. It's like, no, no. But it could you're right. That's what makes it kind of, well, it's just kids being kids, isn't it? But it's just so much darker, Jess, than when I was young. It is very dark. I, do you know what I really, really love? I love that, obviously, when you're watching it, and say if you knew that the film was going to be around HIV, when you're watching it, of course, you naturally assume that it's going to be Jenny because she's being very open. She's had anal sex. She, you know, she's had nine partners. Jenny's saying, I've only slept with one person. I was a virgin beforehand. So I think they did that. It's such a clever decision to say, actually, no, it, it's, it can be the first time you have sex. It can be the only time you have sex. It's not about this person set with nine people and this person set with one. It's just if you have sex with someone positive, that's, you know, it could have been a different message if they had made Ruby the person that was positive. Yes, it could have been. Yeah, no, you are. You are right. And the more you think about it and the intricacies of it, the more you realise they were they were clever. Definitely. So do you want to know how the film came about? I really do. Do you know, I'm not going to lie. This is, I know Sarah said at the beginning, I've been kind of on her to cover this. And that's exactly why. Because this is what I knew you'd tell me. Because I've always thought, like you, when I watched it, it's really hard hitting. It's a great film. But what? why? How did this happen? Why did they make it? Okay. Well, look, the director's called Larry Clark. And he literally got chatting to the screenwriter in a park. Does everyone in New York just hang out in parks all summer? Is this how they work? Yeah, let's know. If you're in New York, is that what happens? Because it sounds great. (laughs) It sounds like it happened here. And as we said, all the young people used in the film, they were basically just picked off the street. I think very few of them, a couple of them had previous acting experience, but quite a few of them didn't. So the screenwriter, he is called Harmony Kareen, and he wrote the film in a week. He grew up in that environment. And Larry wanted the film to feel like the viewer was eavesdropping on the kid's life. Definitely feels like that. And he also wanted to portray a world that adults didn't know about. Ticked a box there as well. And Harmony knew what he was writing about. He'd seen most of what had happened in his own life, with the exception of someone getting HIV. But Larry said he needed that in there to hinge the film around. Otherwise, it's just a documentary. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Otherwise, you're just watching those lives. There needs to be that element in it. Yeah, I see. I do see why he's done that. There has to be a point to it, really, doesn't there? Mm. Otherwise, it is just a day in the life of these young people. Yeah. Um, so Larry says, when it premiered at Sundance in 1996, a lot of adults thought it was some crazy old man's fantasy. But all the kids said, this is the way it is. There had never been a film made like it. I didn't think, personally, it was that shocking. I just don't think people were ready for the truth. I think it's very right there. He thinks the film holds up well over time because I was just documenting life. I think it does, definitely. I would urge anyone to go and watch it because I think mm. it, it does. It still stands the test of time. Like we said, brace yourself. It's coarse. It is. What a ridiculous point of view, saying it's some sort of weird fantasy. I do. But if you look at the impact it had on the public, so did it change the way young people thought about sex? And in all honesty, I would say not really. A lot of adults weren't convinced that this film was true to life. And that's the issue, isn't it? There's a gulf between what adults think is happening 
and what is actually happening in reality. So this kind of theme with him where it's like, oh, it's just your weird fantasy that's being played out in a film is their way of not taking this seriously. And obviously that affects whether it has an impact on um, sexual health messages and, and HIV awareness. That's so true. That's so, so true that, that, like you're saying, it's that gulf, isn't it? It's because, yeah, adults are going, no, it's absolutely ridiculous. And the kids are going, you guys have no idea because this yeah. is exactly what it's like. It's such a shame that they people can't actually listen to young people and go, I am listening. I hear that you're saying that this is your experience. So I'll believe that. And the young people, they already knew all this stuff was going on. This is no surprise to them, this film. It's like, yeah, this stuff happens. So I don't think it got people talking about HIV in the way um, that we might hope. I think in some respects, HIV just gets lost, doesn't it? The HIV is the thing that hinges the whole story together. But because there are so many other dark things happening, I think it almost becomes an aside, doesn't it? You're so horrified by Telly and Casper and their attitudes towards sleeping with women that I do think yeah you almost forget that Jenny she's so lovely and so kind of meek isn't she and quiet and nice you just almost forget that actually this is what we should be focusing on this has changed her life yeah no I agree it there are just so many different layers and issues within the film there are indeed now it was championed by some critics so we have one from the Chicago Sun-Times who gave the film 3.5 stars out of four. And he said, kids is the kind of movie that needs to be talked about afterwards. Doesn't tell us what it means. It's got messages involving safe sex. But safe sex is not going to civilise these kids, make them into curious, capable citizens. What you realise, thinking about Telly, is that the life he's been given has given him nothing that interests him, except for sex, drugs and skateboards. His life is a kind of hell, briefly interrupted by orgasms. Oh, I quite like that. What a, what a sentence. But that's true, isn't it? Because at the end, isn't there a voiceover from Telly where he's basically saying, I love sex? Like, I, I have kind of nothing without sex. Not that he's saying that in a sad way. He's just saying, yeah, that's like, I, yeah. you know, I basically don't want to live. I can't have sex. That's everything to me. But exactly. Why is that the case? Why is there nothing else in his life? So he's so right. I never looked at it like that. No, I hadn't. And, and it is a good way of looking. For, I mean, he's not a likable character at all, I don't think. But yeah, when you break it down like that and say that, you know, there's nothing going for this kid. You know, this is sex is his life at such a young age. And also um, doesn't make me like him anymore, but I at least no. perhaps understand a little bit more. And perhaps it's that whole thing as well. You're almost achieving something. This is going to sound awful. But, you know, he you you watch him sweet talk these young, young girls and convince them into having sex. That it's all going to be fine. And then off he goes. So, again, it's almost like um an achievement in itself isn't it which not a good one that's not what I'm saying but something else feeding into what's making him feel good is this ability to be able to talk these women into bed women girls I shouldn't say women yeah but New York Times Janet Maslin said the film was a wake-up call to the modern world true but other critics they labeled it exploitative or as boy borderline child pornography oh really yeah Yes, definitely. So it's a very mixed camp. It was it because of like we were just saying because of the ages. Like a, a lot of the girls he was trying to sleep with were very young. Yeah. So as they're saying to him, "Oh, this is all weird, dirty old fantasy." To Larry, the director, there were people saying it's literally this is just child pornography. It shouldn't be on air. There'd be people getting off to this. People are crazy though because I'm sure you know we we talked about the fact that we're older a lot. <laughs> Even when we were young, I'm sure you knew lots of people that lost their virginity when they were young. I remember one guy in our year who was like 11. That's crazy, you know. And he came in and said that. And you believe there were young girls having sex. There were young boys having sex. Again, that it's not even unique to New York at this time. That's what happens. Difficult though, isn't it? If a film like this doesn't change people's perceptions and people weren't, they were in denial saying, well, this, this is not happening. How do you get them to realise? How do you educate young people like Telly and Jenny and change that culture? Well, exactly, especially if the, the people that are going to help create that change say, 
the adults that are able to, you know, offer up sexual health campaigns or engage with them in any way, if they refuse to acknowledge this or engage with young people in a way that they actually want, then yeah, you're right, it will never change. It will never change. And that's bizarre, isn't it? As an adult to say, no, I'm just not going to acknowledge this at all. And this isn't, no, how odd, how bizarre. It is, isn't it? So you've kind of got, we've got three camps, actually. You've got those who are saying people need to take notice of this. This is real life. You've got people saying, no, this is kind of exploitative for these children. They should never have been put in this position. And then you've got a third camp that criticised the film because of its perceived lack of artistic merit. Wow. I think the last thing I wondered about was was its artistic merit. What did they say? Do we know? No, I haven't got any specific comments because it's like I really don't think we should kind of focus on that. You know, you're it's almost it's, again, it's a way of deviate deviating really away from what the film's actually about, isn't it? It's to say, oh gosh, yes. Yes, I watched the film and it's the artistic merit that I was most concerned about. Oh, that's so true, isn't it? How irrelevant. I know. Like you, that's not something I was concerned about. It's really gripping. I know we've called it dark, but it's of course that the issues within it are dark that's just the nature of the beast Mm. but it's really gripping it's really well done like you you thought you were just watching a trailer but you end up watching the blooming whole thing that's true once it draws you in you have to watch to the end but you know i watched it in the hope that it got lighter and everyone lived happily ever after oh dear (laughs) there was one person whose quote i wanted to read out so she's a feminist scholar or she was a feminist scholar called bell hooks um, and she was quite well known um, and she spoke extensively about the film uh, and one of her quotes is kids fascinated me this is quite wordy by the way as a film precisely because when you heard about it it seemed like the perfect embodiment of the kind of postmodern notions of journeying and dislocation and fragmentation and yet when you go to see it it is simply such a conservative take on gender on race on the politics of hiv is it conservative well maybe she felt that they didn't it was like a surface level of all of these issues but it didn't ever dig in further to any of them maybe that's oh that's true we're mentioning them but we're not mentioning the impact of the hiv we're not talking about any race issues we're not talking about the issues around rape maybe she means that I don't know oh she could have done it actually because I was willing Jenny to find telly I thought that might bring some sort of sensitivity to the film and a bit of kind of humility to him and also part of me is like that he just needs to know he's doing you don't have that it doesn't make for such a great kind of ending it's not all tied up nicely with a bow but real life isn't I was going to say I quite liked that about it that there was no resolution that this will probably the next day will probably look very much like this day had and the cycle would just go on and on and perhaps it'll be in some other kids lives but this will just there won't be those resolutions you know will Jenny know what that Casper raped. Do you know what will happen? Will, would Casper do that again? Yeah, I kind of liked that because I thought it would be, un, to me, it would be unrealistic if it was all tied up in a boat. I know you love things to be like, perfect, here we go. But I really liked that, that it was like, no, they're waking up to another really, I was going to swear I won't, a really effed up day again because this is their lives. Oh, I wish they'd done a follow up. Well, would I want a follow up day? I didn't like telly anyway. Oh, would he be, would he kind of come to terms with his diagnosis and make amends or would he just go off the rails? I feel like he wouldn't have. I feel like he'd have been a denier because they said it anyway, didn't they? When they're chatting with their friends, nah, AIDS isn't a real thing. They don't know anyone with it. I think he'd have just said, nah, nah, it's not true. You're lying. And off he goes. And sleeps with loads more girls. Gosh. Well, there you go. I mean, the film stood the test of time, didn't it? But do you think now, if this was happening today, she'd just send him a WhatsApp, surely. <laughs> I tell you, I need to speak to you now. I've got urgent news. See, that, it couldn't be made now because there are so many different ways she could have communicated with him. Yeah, there'd be no film, would there? Because wouldn't follow her all over the city as she tries to find him. So there sure. you go. Look, that is kids in a nutshell. Definitely worth watching. Definitely a moment in HIV history. Uh, But maybe not for everyone. A bag of uh, chocolate buttons was the ideal viewing companion for me. But, you know, that's what got me through the tougher bits. Uh, But whatever works. But be warned, it is not easy viewing. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't watch it. Exactly. I think that's the takeaway, isn't it? I think sometimes some of the best films aren't 
particularly easy viewing, but they have a massive impact. Can you hear this? What's this? Yes. What's happening? I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Like they can feel that we're getting to the end of it and they're like, I can't wait anymore. Isn't it? Hang on one second. I'm just going to stop them. Right. Anyway, I've quietened my dogs down now because they seem to give us some sort of I don't know what it was, like a little choir of barking for the end of this episode. How lovely of them. Oh, no. I can't remember what we were saying. We were just saying that although dark, some of the best films often are that you get something out of, that you walk away from, that educate you or change you in some way. That's right. You're absolutely right. I was going to say that had it not been for this podcast, I would not have watched that film. Most definitely not. So it has been a bit of a learning curve for me. I'm glad I watched it. Definitely. I'm going to see what Don't other give me films. any more film recommendations. Oh, that's literally what I was about to say. I was, I'm going to go away this afternoon about what else can we get Sarah to watch? No, any no, suggestions, no. people? Email in. Get those suggestions in. Let's get Sarah watching everything. No, no, no. I'm done now. I'll go back to Friends. <laughs> nice and light. Many, many layers of, uh, well, many issues that they... <laughs> Still in New York, though. A different New York. You say that. Think about how Joey is in Friends and all the different women that he sleeps with. And they never really tackle. Well, they do talk about condoms in a few episodes, but. They don't. And it's like really celebrated. I'm not saying we should either celebrate or not do whatever you like. Like there's no problem with that. But like you're saying, there's never actual conversations. And there aren't really any conversations about the way he treats women, which is pretty horrific. I know. Well, no, you're absolutely right. It is. Um, no, he is terrible with women. Oh, yeah. Kids has changed the way you're watching everything now. Oh, no, I knew this would let you interfere in my TV viewing. <laughs> of course. Now I am. Oh, God, this is awful. What are you going to watch? But I don't know. <laughs> but I'll watch Great British Sewing Bee. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice one. See, there's... You can't go wrong with something like that. Or Glow Up. Oh, I was going to, I literally was just thinking that. I love Glow Up. <gasps> it's on now. We, we can't include this bit in the podcast. No one will care. But the new series is on. Are you watching it? Yes. Yes. It's I good. watched the, the new episode last night. Very good. They're so talented. Oh, oh no. But did it not make you feel a bit kind of useless? So there are at least two people in that series this time that learn all their skills during lockdown I know I know I was like what did I do I did not become an amazing MUA we didn't even learn how to make banana bread no and they've become full-on makeup artists they're amazing yeah they really Very are clever amazing. talented we could have hidden talents we don't even know about that's true <gasps> do you know how we can wrap this episode up now we now we've um mentioned glow up and anyone that watches glow up if you haven't watched it go and watch it amazing um I'm just going to finish it by saying Ding dong. <laughs> Did you like that? That's it. We're done. Excellent. You're all welcome. <laughs> Thank you for listening to HIV Hope and Charity. If you'd like to know more about the work that we do, visit tvps.org.uk. And please like, subscribe and rate the podcast if you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm.